say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Ken Blemings, and I am the Dean of the Honors College at West Virginia University. As such, I will be the Master of Ceremony for this event. I am thrilled to welcome the students we have come to honor, as well as their families. Thank you for being here with us. Additionally, I am pleased to welcome Honors College faculty and staff, members of the Honors Advisory Council, and our invited guest speakers. I am proud to celebrate the accomplishments of our students who have completed their Honors College requirements. Specifically, at this medallion ceremony, we celebrate the Honors Scholars who have completed either the Dean's or Presidential requirements. In a way, this is a bit of an historic night as we have made some curricular changes in the Honors College programming, and this group of students is likely the last to receive this recognition. We have developed a special event to mark this occasion. You have already heard a wonderful performance of our great country's national anthem from Honors College student, Ashley Neff. Thank you, Ashley. Next, we will hear from the president of West Virginia University, Dr. E. Gordon Gee. The Honors College is fortunate to receive support from many different people and chief among them is President Gee. Dr. Gee is a strong supporter of the Honors College and interacts with our students on a regular basis. In the fall semester, Dr. Gee even taught an honors course for us. Dr. Gee is a preeminent force in American higher education and has served as university president for more than 35 years at some of the nation's finest institutions, including this one. So at this time, it is my great pleasure to invite Dr. Gee to provide his remarks. So welcome to Honors College graduates and families in this difficult year that has upended our traditional commencement ceremonies, I am delighted to connect virtually with many of West Virginia University's best and brightest 2021 graduates. Not only will your unique graduation circumstances distinguish you from all previous Mountaineers, but you will also go down in university history as the last cohort to have completed the traditional four-year honors program. I am proud to be here with you this evening and recognize this extraordinary achievement. Honors College students have always dug deeper, explored further, and seized every opportunity for learning, launching you on our most innovative paths toward gaining knowledge and then applying it. Along the way, you expected nothing but the best from yourself and you delivered. I am truly grateful to Dr. Blemings, Dr. Clement, the Honors College faculty, staff, and advisors for helping you make the most of your college experience. And I have no doubt that you will be continue to shine as you begin your careers or delve into graduate or professional study. With the intense learning focus of the Honors College curriculum, you may have ignited your life's passion through one or more of the courses you took. Finding your passion is finding your purpose and pursuing it is one key to a happy life. The other key, of course, is cleaving always to your core values, including our Mountaineer values of service to others, respect for all, curiosity about everything, accountability 
for the quality and integrity of your work and appreciation for every opportunity you find. In short, if you combine your passion with compassion, you will continue to excel. You will continue to achieve success. You will gain lasting happiness. So congratulations once again, and let's go Mountaineers. Thank you, Dr. Gee, and thank you for your continued support of the Honors College and its students. Now, it is my great honor to introduce our keynote speaker. We are excited to have with us one of our own, Mr. Travis Rosik. Mr. Rosik graduated from WVU as an Honors College student in 2003 with a bachelor's degree in computer science and electrical engineering. He also obtained a master's of science degree in the same discipline from WVU. After WVU, Mr. Rosik attended the George Washington University Executive Leadership Development Program. He served as a principal consultant to software giant McAfee and currently serves as the Chief Strategy and Technology Officer for Blue Vector, a subsidiary of Comcast working in the area of cybersecurity. Additionally, Mr. Rosik serves as a strategic advisor for Tycon, a software security company. He lives in Leesburg, Virginia with his wife and four children, and we are grateful that he has found time to be with us this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Travis Rossi. Hello, and good evening, Ken. I'm truly honored that you invited me to speak this evening. As Dr. Blooming's mentioned, I am a 2003 graduate of WVU and the Honors College. I'm married to an amazing wife, Christine, and currently live in Northern Virginia with our four rambunctious children, ages five to 10, two of which happen to be eight-year-old twins. <laughs> I spent my first two years living on campus in the Honors dorms. At that time, they were Dannisman and Stonecker Halls. This is the first time that my classmates and myself had access to the internet that wasn't through a dial-up modem. For those of you that don't know what a dial-up modem is, feel free to use a tool that also didn't exist back then called Google Search. Now, I'm really hoping that this is more a reflection of how rapidly technology innovates versus how rapidly I'm aging. <laughs> uh, but all kidding aside, uh, my, my years at, at WVU and the, and the Honors College were amazing. I have many fond memories and built some lifelong friendships um, that have that been uh, instrumental throughout my life. Um, also during my uh, time at WVU, I loved attending, uh, attending WV sporting events uh, and also cherished many of the road trips that my friends and I made to Pittsburgh, uh, to Washington, DC, uh, to visit some of the sites, um, attend many sporting events uh, like the Washington Wizards, uh, Pittsburgh Pirates, P Pittsburgh Pen Penguins games. Um, just tremendous fun and, and great times. Also, I love playing uh, pickup basketball on campus as well. Uh, that was a hobby, a uh, good exercise and downtime. Two phrases that I often use and have experienced quite a bit over the years are expect the unexpected. Personally, I have a set of twins and my wife and I never expected for that to happen. However, it's been an amazing experience. Also, plan to have no plan. Opportunities will arise in life that you've not had, it's not part of your plan. And you're going to have to be able to make decisions uh, without a plan. Case in point, after my sophomore year, WVU was designated a center of academic excellence in cybersecurity by the National Security Agency, or NSA for short. WVU was among one of only a few schools across the country that were designated. As a result, I applied for a scholarship through the program as it was designed to bolster the cybersecurity workforce of the U.S. Department of Defense, DOD. After a few months, I received a letter from the NSA offering me the scholarship as well as full-time employment upon graduation. I was shocked and I was also only one of 10 students in the country that, that earned the scholarship uh, during its inaugural year. Um, I happily accepted, but knowing, not knowing exactly what I signed up for. So I too, like many of you, wondered if I'd made the right decision but within 18 short hours, all of my worries disappeared because the very next morning was September 11th. And after that, I felt a very strong patriotism. Um, my worry disappeared and it actually transformed to drive and motivation uh, to help uh, defend the nation. 
So I was very fortunate to be a part of the first cohort of students in the scholarship program. Um, and I was able to build a exhaustive network of DOD uh, senior leaders, uh, which was an amazing experience. And can't stress the value of building a strong network and mentorship uh, enough. Uh, during the summers, I was able to work um, in different locations while I finished undergraduate school. And then I continued the scholarship uh, to complete my master's degree as well at WVU. Uh, my first summer, I worked on the DOD's public key infrastructure uh, program. My next summer, I worked in a group uh, that created a lot of the DOD cybersecurity uh, guidance uh, for the department, which was later adopted by much of commercial industry. And then my last summer rotation before uh, graduating from uh, uh, grad school uh, was working at the Pacific Computer Emergency Response Team, uh, CERT for short. So I worked in the PAC CERT uh, in a very tough location called Hawaii. <laughs> so uh, but very, very tough place to work. Upon graduation, I began working at a DOD field office in rural Pennsylvania, and it was the main office for a cutting edge cybersecurity organization that traveled the globe supporting every DOD base. Specifically, I started working on a newly established incident response team, and when tasked by what is now US Cyber Command, we had 24 hours to be on site uh, responding to the breach or the incident. So, so no pressure. <laughs> um, so I was drinking from the fire hydrant, and in short order, I started to lead these incident response engagements and many high profile organizations. Some of the efforts I led actually made the news and I would get calls from my friends uh, in the DOD space. Um, they would tell me to turn on the news because Wolf Blitzer's covering a story uh, on one of the breaches you responded to uh, six months prior. But after a while, I started to get burned out um, as this work was very reactive. As an engineer, I wanted to attempt to solve the root cause of these problems. I wanted to focus on a more proactive uh, approach to preventing these attacks. So I was able to transition to leading uh, to what became the largest endpoint uh, security program in the world. Um, this program became one of US Cybercom's leading tools in defending the military's networks. My contributions of this program, uh, later called Host Based Security System or HBSS for short, earned me the very prestigious DOD CIO's individual award for defending the DOD's global network, uh, annual award rather, um, while I was only in my mid twenties. Uh, some of my other experiences uh, included um, building a NSA certified red team. We would go out and uh, red team uh, Navy ships, DOD satellites, um, headquarter buildings of COCOMs, uh, and other large programs of record. Uh, I, I then also was able to create a branch uh, that was responsible for building playbooks for Cyber Command, um, conducting NTSB like uh, investigations for cyber breaches. You know, what was the root cause of the, of, of the issue uh, and coming up with recommendations of, of how to defend the networks um, in the future. So after 10 years as, as a DOD civilian, I decided to go to commercial industry and use my background to help solve some of these challenges with cybersecurity to also help uh, the private sector. Um, I focus on improving and building new capabilities from a product perspective. Uh, so I spent time helping shape the product strategy at McAfee. Uh, and then later I went to FireEye. Um, that experience gave me some exposure to the startup world in Silicon Valley, which, which was very appealing. Uh, since then, I've been focusing on early stage startups um, that have compelling technologies and helping grow those companies uh, like Tycon. And now currently I'm at Blue Vector, uh, which recently became a, a part of the Comcast family uh, a couple years ago. The DOD funded me to enroll in the Executive Leadership Development Program at George Washington University. This two-year program further enhanced my understanding of leadership, and I strive to implement it in everyday life. Most businesses fail, and failure is normal. You should expect to experience failure in some point of your life or career. If you don't fail, that's not a sign that you're uniquely great, but rather a sign that you aren't taking on big enough challenges or risks. It's important to learn from your failures. Many successful people have used failure as a learning experience as well as motivation for future success. Also, it's important to fail fast and know when to walk away. Another thing that I've learned is that what you've done to be successful as an individual contributor or in your current role is not the formula that's gonna help you be successful in your next role. It's important to remember that as your career grows and evolves, that you need to grow and evolve your management and leadership skills. Constantly being self-aware and exercising your weak areas will ensure that you're successful into the future. 
Also, when coming out of college, my goals were centered on having impact, but two other big focus areas were title and salary. As I've gained life experiences, I've also learned that there's several other factors one must weigh uh, when charting their path, like quality of life, work-life balance, enjoyment of your job and work, uh, the amount of travel you do or your, your benefits, uh, long commutes, uh, and many others. These are also just as important, if not more important to some people, uh, than salary and title alone. Now some words of advice. Never say never. Don't dismiss an opportunity just because you don't see how it has value today, because it may be valuable at a future stage of your career. I've experienced this many times in my life and is one of my biggest regrets. <clears throat> For example, I used to say, I'll never leave the public sector. Also, never burn a bridge. The world's a very small place, and those are the types of things that can come back to haunt you years or decades down the line. While the potential for your careers have never been higher, neither has your metabolism. <laughs> I, I should know. Don't take your health and fitness for granted and make sure you prioritize it as you get older. Lastly, I wanted to say congratulations, class of 2021. Thank you for this incredible opportunity to spend time with you this evening and share my story. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Travis, thank you so much for those words and for your support of the Honors College. I've appreciated getting to know you and look forward to working together with you in the future. Now we are trying something new, uh, a little technology, using some technology to read the names of our medallion recipients. Roll it. Elizabeth Opal Detcher. Maria Angelina Ducci. Brian Robert Frangello. Ashley. N. Grace. Elisa M. Mantini. Spencer Albert Mays. Caitlin Estelle Mickles. Abigail Lorraine Osborne. Michaela Renee Schmauder. Andrew. Kenneth Snyder Faith Alexandra Stone Cordell A. Summers Kevin Michael Tennant Tonight, we gather to celebrate and it is absolutely fitting that we should do so. To our awardees, congratulations on a job well done. I applaud you. You pushed yourself harder and got more out of your education. You are better for it, and so are we. You helped make us better, and I am trusting that you will use your education to make the world a better place. And in this way, your education is in fact a public good. To our parents, guardians, grandparents, and others who help support these students, I salute you. Thank you for the role you played. Thank you for being on your student's team. Support means so many different things. It could be financial, a listening ear, a hug, a phone call, a prayer, a kick in the butt. Whatever your role, thank you for being on your student's team. We all need a team, and I am intensely grateful for mine. And congratulations to all our students recognized this evening. I wish you all the best of success wherever your endeavors carry you next please do stay in touch with us. We love to hear your adventures. I encourage you to join the WVU Honors College Students and Alumni LinkedIn group. Thank you to our guest speakers, Dr. Gee and Mr. Rosique. Thank you to those who make this ceremony possible. Lisa Verlinden, Dr. Clement, Dr. Hebert Lima, and Colleen Good. That concludes our ceremony, but no WVU ceremony is complete without, well, you know. Congratulations and God bless. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is over there 
older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like a breeze. Country roads take me home to the place. All my memories gather round her. Minus lady, stranger to blue water. Dark and dusty, painted on the sky. Mr. Taste of moonshine, teardrops in my eyes. Country roads take me home. To the place I belong, West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home, country roads. I hear her voice in the morning hours, she calls me, the radio reminds me of my home far away. Down the road, I get a feeling that I should have been home yesterday, Lord. Yesterday, country roads take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia. Mountain mama, take me home. 